part one of iphigenia in aulis this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by expatriate in bangor maine iphigenia in aulis by euripides translated by arthur sanders way eighteen forty seven to nineteen thirty part one argument when the hosts of hellas were mustered at aulis beside the narrow sea with purpose to sail against troy they were hindered from departing thence by the wrath of artemis who suffered no favouring wind to blow then when they inquired concerning this calchas the prophet proclaimed that the anger of the goddess would not be appeased save by the sacrifice of iphigenia eldest daughter of agamemnon captain of the host now she abode yet with her mother in mycenae but the king wrote a lying letter to her mother bidding her send her daughter to aulis there to be wedded to achilles all this did odysseus devise but achilles knew nothing thereof when the time drew near that she should come agamemnon repented him sorely and herein is told how he sought to undo the evil and of the maiden's coming and how achilles essayed to save her and how she willingly offered herself for hellas's sake and of the marvel that befell at the sacrifice scene in the greek camp at aulis outside the tent of agamemnon night a lamp burning in agamemnon's tent old servant waiting without agamemnon appears at entrance of tent agamemnon ancient before this tent come stand old servant coming forward i come what purpose hast thou in hand agamemnon my king agamemnon and wilt thou not hasten old servant i haste for the need of mine eld scant sleep provideth this eld o'er mine eyelids like vigilant sentry is placed agamemnon what star in the heaven's height yonder rideth old servant sirius nigh to the pleiad seven he is sailing yet through the midst of heaven agamemnon sooth voice there is none nor slumberous cheep of bird nor whisper of sea and deep is the hush of the winds on euripus that sleep old servant yet without thy tent agamemnon my lord why dost thou pace thus feverishly over aulis yonder is night's peace poured they are hushed which along the walls keep ward come pass we within agamemnon i envy thee ancient and whoso unperilled may pace life's pathway unheeded and unrenowned but little i envy the high in place old servant yet the life of these is glory crowned agamemnon ah still with the glory is peril bound sweetly ambition tempteth i trow yet is it neighbour to sore disquiet for the god's will clasheth with man's will now wrecking his life by men that riot with diverse desires whom one cannot content now is the web of a life's work rent old servant nay in a king i love not this repining atreus begat thee agamemnon not only to bask in days all cloudless shining needs must be joy and sorrow in thy lot mortal thou art though marred be thy designing still to fulfilment is the god's will brought thou the star glimmer of thy lamp hast litten writest a letter in thine hand yet grasped then thou erasest that which thou hast written sealest and breakest bands as soon as clasped castest to earth the pine slip ever streaming tears from thine eyes nor lacketh anything of madness in thy mien despairful seeming what is thy grief thy strange affliction king come let me share thy story to the loyal thou wilt reveal it to the true and tried whom at thy bridal with the dower royal tyndareus sent to wait upon thy bride agamemnon three daughters leda child of thestius bear phoebe and clytemnestra mine own wife and helen wooing this last princes came in fortune foremost in all hellas land 
with fearful threatenings breathed they murder each against his rivals if he won her not then sore perplexed was tyndareus her sire how giving or refusing he should scape shipwreck and this thing came into his mind that each to each the suitors should make oath and clasp right hands and with burnt sacrifice should pour drink offerings and swear to this whose wife soever tyndareus's child should be him to defend if any from her home stole her and fled and thrust her lord aside to march against him and to raise his town helene or alien with their mailed array so when they had pledged them thus and cunningly old tyndareus had by craft outwitted them he let his daughter midst the suitors choose him unto whom love's sweet winds wafted her she chose oh had she never chosen him menelaus then from phrygia he who judged the goddesses as argive legend tells to sparta came his vesture flower bestarred gleaming with gold barbaric bravery loved helen and was loved stole her and fled to ida's steadings when from home afar menelaus was through hellas frenzy stung he sped invoking tyndareus's ancient oath claiming of all their bond to help the wronged thereat upsprang the hellene spear in hand donned mail of fight and to this narrow gorge of aulis came with galleys and with shields and many a horse and chariots many arrayed and me for menelaus's sake they chose for chief his brother would some other man might but have won the honour in my stead now when the gathered host together came at aulis did we tarry weather bound then the seer calchas bade in our despair slay iphigenia her whom i begat to artemis who dwelleth in this land so should we voyage and so phrygia smite but if we slew her not it should not be i when i heard this bade talthybius dismiss the host with proclamation loud since i would never brook to slay my child whereat my brother pleading manifold pleas to the horror thrust me in a tablet's folds i wrote and bade therein my wife to send our daughter as to be achilles bride extolled therein the hero's high repute said with achaia's host he would not sail except a bride of our house came to thea yea this i counted should persuade my wife such framing of feigned spousals for the maid this none achaean knoweth with me save calchas odysseus menelaus now that wrong i here revoke and write the truth within this scroll which in the gloom of night thou sawst me ancient open and reseal up go this letter unto argos bear and what the tablet hideth in its folds all things here written will i tell to thee for loyal to my wife and house art thou old servant speak and declare that my tale heard ring true beside the written word agamemnon reads this add i to my letter writ before o child of leda do thou send thy daughter not unto the waveless shore of aulis where the bend of that sea pinion of euboea lies gulf shapen ere we celebrate our daughter's marriage tide solemnities a season must we wait old servant yet if achilles lose his plighted spouse will not his anger's tempest swell against thee and thy wife sure perilous is this thy meaning tell agamemnon his name no more achilles lends hath known naught of a bride nor aught we planned nor how to him i have in word alone given my daughter's hand old servant fearfully agamemnon was this done that thou shouldst bring thy child o king hither named bride unto the goddess's son yet a burnt offering agamemnon woe i am all distraught i am reeling ruinward speed thy foot ancient slacking not for eld old servant i speed my lord agamemnon sit thee not down where the forest founts leap neither be bound by the spell of sleep old servant breathe not such doubt abhorred agamemnon when thou comest where ways part keenly then watch lest a chariot escape thy ken 
whose rolling wheels peradventure may bear my daughter hitherward even to where be the ships of the danaean men for if thou light on her escort train then turn them aback grasp shake the rein to the walls cyclopean speed them again old servant yea this will i do agamemnon from the gates forth go old servant yet how shall thy wife and thy daughter know my faith herein that the thing is so agamemnon keep thou this seal whose impress lies on the letter thou bearest away the skies already are grey and they kindle afar with the dawn's first flush and the sun-god's car now help thou my strait exit old servant no man to the end is fortunate happy is none for a lot unvexed never man yet won exit enter chorus chorus i have come to the aulian sea-gulf's verge to her gleaming sands i have voyaged eurypus's rushing surge from the city that stands queen of the sea-gate calchas mine on whose bosom fold arethusa gleameth the fountain divine have come to behold the achaean array and the hero's oars that shall onward speed a thousand galleys to troyland's shores these two kings lead yea with prince menelaus the golden-haired as our own lords say and with king agamemnon all these fared on the vengeance way on the quest of her whom the herdman drew from beside the river of whispering reeds his sin wage due aphrodite the giver promised when into the fountain down spray veiled she descended when with hera and pallas for beauty's crown the cyprian contended and through artemis grove of sacrifice hasting i came while swift in my cheeks did the crimson rise the roses of shame for to look on the shields on the tents agleam with arms was i fain and on thronging team upon chariot team there marked i twain the oilid aias and telamon's child salamis pride by the shifting maze of the draughts beguiled sat side by side protesilaus and he that was sprung of poseidon's seed palamides and there by the strong arm flung of diomede did the discus leap and he joyed therein and hard beside him was meriones of the war-god's kin men wondering eyed him and laertes son from the isle hills far through the sea haze gleaming and nireus of all that host of war the goodliest seeming Mesode. there was achilles whose feet are as winds for the storm rush unreined him i beheld who of thetis was born who of chiron was trained clad in his armour he raced over sand over shingle he strained matching in contest of swiftness his feet with a chariot of four rounding the sweep of the course for the victory rang evermore shouts from ferreted eumelus and i with the goad that he bore smote he his horses most goodly i saw them saw gold glitter deck richly their bits and the midmost the car yoke who bore on their neck dappled were they with a hair here and there like a snow-smitten fleck they that in traces without round the perilous turning post swept bays were they spotted their fetlocks pelaides beside them on leapt sheathed in his harness unflagging by car rail and axle he kept strophe two and i came where the host of the warships lies a marvel past telling to fill with the vision a woman's eyes and a heart joy swelling and there on the rightward wing arrayed was phythia's myrmidon battle aid fifty galleys swift for the war with the ranks of oars by their bulwarks swayed and high on their sterns in effigies golden the nereid goddesses gleamed afar the sign by achilles host upholden antistrophe two hard by keels equal by tale unto these did the argives gather with teleus's fosterling passed they the seas may Estius his father and with thenelus capaneus's son at his side and there did the galleys of attica ride with the scion of theseus the next to the left 
ships three score in the peerless pride of their blazonry was a winged car bearing pallas with horses of hooves uncleft a blessed sign unto folk seafaring strophe three boethia's barks sea plashing fifty there lay i mark their ensigns flashing cadmus had they whose golden dragon shone on each stern's garnison and laetus earth's son led their array galleys from phocis came in locrian barks the same by tale went thronium's fame neath aeus's sway antistrophe three atriades titan pallas mycenae sent thronged decks of fivescore galleys his brother went as friend with friend to take her whom the home bonds break for alien gallant's sake for chastisement their ships of pylos king gerenian nestor bring the weird bull blazoning that alpheus lent epode gunius king of aenean men marshalled galleys two and ten hard thereby the bulwarks tower of the lords of elis power whom the host epeans name aretus to lead them came led the taphians argent oared therewithal which owned for lord phileus scion magus who from the echinad isles whereto no man sails his war-host drew aeus salamis fosterling held in touch his rightward wing with their left who nearest lay helm obeying keels were they twelve which marshalled uttermost closed the line that fringed the coast as i heard and now might mark whoso with barbaric bark meets him from the grapple stern never home shall he return lo the goodly sea array that mine eyes have seen to-day erst the great war musters story through mine home rang now its glory in mine heart shall live for a enter old servant grasping at a letter which menelaus has snatched from him old servant menelaus this is outrage shame on thee menelaus stand back thou art all too loyal to thy lord old servant a proud reproach thou castest upon me menelaus if thou o'erstep thy duty thou shalt rue old servant tis not for thee to unseal the scroll i bear menelaus nor yet for thee to bring to all greeks bane old servant with others argue that but this restore menelaus i will not yield it up old servant nor i let go menelaus soon then my staff shall dash thine head with blood old servant glorious it were in my lord's cause to die menelaus unhand a slave thou art over full of words old servant ho master outrage lo this man hath snatched by violence thy letter from mine hand agamemnon nor will have regard to write enter agamemnon agamemnon ha what this tumult at my doors and this unseemly brawl upstirred menelaus mine the right to speak is mine before this fellow to be heard agamemnon wherefore dost thou strive with him menelaus and by violence hail menelaus releases the old servant who exits menelaus look me in the face that i may make beginning of the tale agamemnon shall i dread to lift mine eyelids who of dreadless atreus came menelaus seest thou this tablet this the bearer of a tale of shame agamemnon i behold it and from thine hand first do thou surrender it menelaus never ere i show to all the danaeans that therein is writ agamemnon how and didst thou break my seal and know'st thou what thou shouldest not menelaus yea unto thy sorrow break it that i know thy secret plot agamemnon ay and where didst find it gods what front of impudence is here menelaus watching if thy child from argos to the host were drawing near agamemnon what dost thou to spy upon me is not this done shamelessly menelaus mine own pleasure was my warrant i am not thy bondman i agamemnon is not this outrageous 
wouldst thou limit in mine house my power menelaus yea thy thoughts are shifty changing ever with the changing hour agamemnon subtly hast thou glozed the evil hateful is the artful tongue menelaus but the treacherous heart to friends disloyal is a hoard of wrong i would question thee and do not thou with spirit angered jarred fence aside from thee the truth nor i will press thee over hard hast forgotten how thou fain wouldst lead the greeks to ilium's shore feign'st not to wish the thing but in thine heart didst crave it sore how to all men wast thou lowly clasping hands of amity keeping open doors for whoso of the folk would seek to thee bidding all accost thee freely challenging the modest heart seeking by thy shifts to buy advancement as an open mart ah but when thy power was won thou changest all thy mien no more wast thou unto friends of days gone by a friend as theretofore inaccessible and seldom found at home the noble soul ought not raised to high estate to turn him from the paths of old nay but more than ever loyal then unto his friends should be when his power to help is more than ever through prosperity first therein where first i found thee base i visit thee with blame then when thou and all the host of hellas unto aulus came naught wast thou at heaven's visitation utterly dismayed when the wafting breezes failed thee when the sons of danaus bade send the ships disbanded thence nor toil at aulus all in vain o oh, thy rueful face thy wildered eye lest thou on priam's plain thou the captain of a thousand galleys ne'er shouldst pour thy spears what shall i do didst thou ask me what device and whence appears that of lordship i be not bereft nor lose my fair renown then when calchas on the altar bade thee lay thy child's life down unto artemis the danaid so should sail with gladness filled blithely promised thou to slay thy daughter yea did send free willed not constrained thou canst not say it to thy queen that hitherward she should send thy child as who should take achilles for her lord lo the self-same sky o'erhead which heard thee then record thy vow now thou turn'st about art found recasting that thy message now saying thou wilt ne'er be slayer of thy child so is it still many and many a man is like thee toileth with unflagging will up the heights of power thereafter from its summit falls with shame some through blindness of the people some be all themselves to blame they whose nerveless hands can war the city not that they have won but for me tis hapless hellas most of all that i bemoan fain she is of high achievement yet shall caitiff aliens make her a mock who scape her hands for thine and for thy daughter's sake ne'er may i for kinship's cause exalt a man to rule the land nor to lead a host he needeth wisdom who would men command for tis his to helm a nation who hath wit to understand chorus fearful twixt brethren words of high disdain and conflict are when into strife they fall agamemnon now would i in turn upbraid thee briefly not exalting high shameless brows of haughty scorning nay but ever soberly as becomes a brother for the noble hold by chivalry answer why this breath tempestuous why these bloodshot eyes of strife who doth wrong thee what dost crave dost yearn to win a virtuous wife this i cannot find thee her thou gainest vilely rulest thou what must i who have not erred for thy transgression suffer now or doth mine advancement gall thee nay but one desire thou hast in thine arms to clasp a lovely woman reason dost thou cast yea an honour to the winds the pleasures of the vile are base i who erst took evil counsel if i now give wisdom place am i mad nay rather thou who having lost an evil spouse wouldst rewin her though thy loss be gain god's kindness to thy house those infatuate marriage craving suitors swore an oath indeed unto tyndarius yet these did hope i trow the goddess lead on 
and brought it more to pass than thou and all thy strong control lead them thou o oh, these are ready in the folly of their soul god is not an undiscerning judge his eyes are keen to try oaths exacted by constraint and troth plight held unrighteously tis not i will slay my children not in justice's despite so shall thine avenging on a wife must want in speed aright while i waste through nights of weeping pine through days of misery for my lawless godless dealing with the children born to me lo mine answer brief and clear and easy to be understood if thou turn from wisdom yet shall mine house follow after good chorus this controverteth that thou saidst before yet good is thy resolve to spare thy child menelaus alas for wretched me friends have i none agamemnon yea if thou seek not to destroy thy friends menelaus how wilt thou prove thyself our father's son agamemnon by brotherhood in wisdom not in folly menelaus friends ought to feel friends sorrow as their own agamemnon by kindness not unkindness challenge me menelaus wilt thou not then with greece this travail share agamemnon hellas like thee hath god's stroke driven mad menelaus vaunt then thy sceptre traitor to thy brother i will betake me unto other means and other friends enter messenger in haste end of part one recording by expatriate in bangor maine part two of iphigenia in aulis by euripides translated by arthur sanders way eighteen forty seven to nineteen thirty this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part two messenger o king of hella's host agamemnon lo thy child i bring to thee named of thee iphigenia in thine halls her mother clytemnestra comes with her orestes too the babe to glad thine eyes who from thine home long time hast sojourned far but after weary journeying at a spring fair flowing now the women bathe their feet they and their steeds for midst the meadow grass we turned them loose that they might browse therein i to prepare thee their forerunner come for the host knoweth it so swiftly spread the rumour of the coming of thy child and to the sight runs all the multitude to see thy child for folk in high estate famed and observed of all observers are a bridal is it they ask or what is toward or hath the king of yearning for his child sent for his daughter others mightst thou hear to artemis to aulis queen they pay the maiden spousal rites the bridegroom who up then prepare the mons for sacrifice garland your heads thou too prince menelaus strike up the bridal hymn and through the tents let the flute ring with sound of dancing feet for gladsome dawns this day upon the maid agamemnon tis well i thank thee pass thou now within well shall the rest speed as fate marcheth on exit messenger woe's me what can i say or where begin into what bonds of doom have i been cast me fortune hath outwitted she hath proved too cunning far for all my stratagems lo now what vantage cleaves to lowly birth for such may lightly ease their hearts with tears and tell out all their grief the same pangs touch the high-born but our life is tyrannized by dignity we are the people's thralls so it is with me for i shame to weep and yet shame not to weep wretch that i am who am fallen into deepest misery lo now what shall i say unto my wife or how receive her with what countenance meet she hath undone me coming midst mine ills unbidden yet twas reason she should come with her own child to render to the bride love's service for i shall be villain found 
and the unhappy maid why name her maid hades me seems shall take her soon for bride oh me the pity of it i hear her pray ah father wilt thou slay me now such bridal mayst thou too find and all whom thou dost love orestes at her side shall wail the grief unmeaning deep with meaning of the babe alas how priam's son hath ruined me paris whose sin with helen wrought all this chorus i also far as alien woman may mourn for the griefs of princes pity thee menelaus brother vouchsafe to me to grasp thine hand agamemnon i give it thine the triumph mine the pang menelaus i swear by pelops of my sire and thine named father and by atreus our own sire that from mine heart's core i will speak to thee to serve no end but all mine inmost thought i seeing how thine eyes are streaming tears pity thee and the answering tear i shed and from the words erst uttered i draw back thy foe no more lo in thy place i stand and i exhort thee neither slay thy child nor choose my good for thine unjust it were that thou shouldst groan and all my cup be sweet that thy seed die and mine behold the light for what would i can i not find a bride peerless elsewhere if i for marriage yearn how should i lose whom least i ought to lose a brother win a helen bad for good mad was i and raw-witted till i viewed things near and saw what slaying children means yea also pity for the hapless maid doomed to be slaughtered for my bridal's sake stole o'er me on our kinship when i thought for what with helen hath thy child to do from aulis let the host disbanded go but thou forbear to drown thine eyes with tears o brother mine nor challenge me to weep if thou hast part in oracles touching her no part be mine my share i yield to thee swift change is here thou'lt say from those grim words nay but most meet for love of him who sprang from the same womb i change no knaves want this ever to cleave unto the better part chorus right noble speech and worthy tantalus zeus's son thou shamest not thine ancestors agamemnon thanks menelaus that beyond all hope thou hast spoken rightly worthily of thee strife betwixt brethren for a woman's sake may rise or of ambition out on it this kinship that brings bitterness to both nay but we are tangled in the net of fate we needs must work the murder of my child menelaus how who shall force thee to destroy thine own agamemnon the whole array of the achaean host menelaus never if thou to argus send her back agamemnon this might i secretly that cannot i menelaus what fear not thou the rabble overmuch agamemnon calchas will tell the hosts the oracles menelaus not if he first have died this were not hard agamemnon the whole seer tribe is one ambitious curse menelaus abominable and useless while alive agamemnon the fear that steals o'er me is this not thine menelaus if thou tell not how should i understand agamemnon all this the seed of sisyphus doth know menelaus odysseus cannot injure thee and me agamemnon he is i shifty a mob partisan menelaus thrall to ambition is he perilous bane agamemnon will he not rise thinkst thou in the argive midst and tell the oracles that calchas spake and how i promised artemis her victim and now play false and rousing so the host shall bid them slay thee me and sacrifice the maiden though to argos i escape yet will they come destroy it to the ground raise it with all its cyclopean walls even this is mine affliction woe is me 
how by the gods i am whelmed amidst despair take heed for one thing brother through the host passing that clytemnestra hear this not till i to hades shall have sealed my child that mine affliction be with fewest tears and stranger damsels hold your peace thereof exeunt chorus strophe o oh, well for them for whom the queen of love shall temper passion's fire and bring fruition of desire with gentle pace and sober mien whose souls are seas at rest are spared the frenzy thrill the fever pain the spells that charm the arrows twain the shafts of love the golden-haired whereof one flieth tipped with bliss and one with ruin of unrest o queen of beauty from my breast my bridal bower avert thou this let love's sweet spells in measure meet rest on me pure desires be mine may aphrodite's dayspring shine on me avaunt her mid-noon heat antistrophe the hearts of men be diverse wrought diverse their lives but ever clear through all true goodness shall appear and each high lesson throughly taught lends wings to soar to virtue's heaven for in self-reverence wisdom is and to discern the right to this an all-transforming charm is given fadeless renown is shed thereby on life by fame ah glorious the quest of virtue is for us the cloistered virtue chastity but for the man his inborn grace of law and order maketh great by service of her sons the state his virtue works by thousand ways thou camest paris back to where mid ida's heifer's snowy fair anethered thou didst pipe such strain that old olympus spirit there awoke again full uttered kind and dreamy peace browsed when the summons came to thee to judge that goddess rivalry whose issue sped thee unto greece before the ivory palaces to stand to see in helen's eyne that burned on thine the love-light shine to thrill with eros ecstasies for which cause strife is leading all hellas with ships with spears to fall upon troy's tower coronal lo lo the great ones of the earth how blessed they be iphigenia proud in birth from princes see see clytemnestra her who came of tyndareus o stately name of mighty sires o crowned with fame their destiny they that be lifted high in wealth in might are even as gods in meaner mortal sight enter riding in a chariot clytemnestra and iphigenia with attendants stand we calchas daughters near stretching hands of kindly aid so unstumbling to the ground down the queen shall step nor fear shall the princess know upstayed agamemnon's child renowned strangers we no tumult here make we entrance undismayed be of argos strangers found clytemnestra an omen of good fortune count i this thy kindness and fair greeting of thy speech good hope have i that i am come to lead the bride to happy bridal from the car take ye the dower that for the maid i bring and bear to the pavilion with good heed and thou my daughter from the horse wain step daintily setting down thy tender feet and ye receive her damsels in your arms and from the chariot help her safely forth and let one lend to me a propping hand that i may leave the wain seat gracefully some pray you stand before the horse's yoke for timorous is the horse's restive eye and this child take ye agamemnon's boy orestes who is yet a wordless babe how lulled to sleep child by the swaying car wake for thy sister's bridal smilingly for thine heroic strain shall get for kin a hero even the nereid's godlike child hither my daughter seat thee at my side hard by thy mother iphigenia take thy place and to these strangers show my bliss lo thy beloved father welcome him enter agamemnon iphigenia running to his arms o mother i outrun thee be not wroth 
and heart to heart i clasp my father close clytemnestra o most of me revered agamemnon king we come obedient unto thy behest iphigenia fain am i father on thy breast to fall after so long though others i outrun for o oh, i yearn for thy face be not wroth clytemnestra child this thou mayst yea ever most of all the children i have borne thou lovest thy sire iphigenia father so long it was so glad am i agamemnon and glad am i thy words suffice for twain iphigenia hail well hast thou done father bringing me agamemnon starts well child i know not how to answer this iphigenia ha so glad to see me yet what troubled look agamemnon on kings and captains weigheth many a care iphigenia this hour be mine this one yield not to care agamemnon yea i am all thine now my thoughts stray not iphigenia unknit thy brow then let love melt thine eye agamemnon lo child i joy as i joy seeing thee iphigenia and yet and yet thine eyes are welling tears agamemnon yea for the absence yet to come is long iphigenia i know not know not dear my sire thy meaning agamemnon thy wise discernment stirs my grief the more iphigenia so i may please thee folly will i talk agamemnon ah me aside this silence breaks my heart aloud i thank thee iphigenia stay father with thy children stay at home agamemnon i would my wish is barred there lies my grief iphigenia perish their wars and menelaus's wrongs agamemnon my ruin shall be others ruin first iphigenia long absence thine hath been in aulis gulf agamemnon still hindered is the armies speeding forth iphigenia where dwell the phrygians father as men say agamemnon where o oh, that priamid paris ne'er had dwelt iphigenia far dost thou voyage father leaving me agamemnon thou art in like case with thy father child iphigenia sighs would it were meet that i might voyage with thee agamemnon thou too must voyage where thou shalt think on me iphigenia shall i sail with my mother or alone agamemnon alone from mother severed and from sire iphigenia how hast thou found me father a new home agamemnon enough it fits not maidens no such things iphigenia speed back from phrygia father victor there agamemnon a sacrifice must i first offer here iphigenia yea thou must reverence heaven with holy rites agamemnon this thou shalt see shalt by the laver stand iphigenia father shall i lead dances round the altar agamemnon o oh, happier thou in ignorance than i pass thou within where none but maids shall see one sad kiss first one clasp of thy right hand ere thy long sojourn from thy father far o bosom o ye cheeks o golden hair on you what burden phrygia's town hath laid and helen but no more the sudden flood bursts o'er me from mine eyes as i touch thee pass into the pavilion exit iphigenia pardon me o leda's child it well nigh breaks my heart to yield to achilles hand my daughter mine such partings make for bliss but none the less they wring the heart when fathers to strange homes yield children for whose sake they have laboured long clytemnestra i am not so dull be sure that i no less shall feel this pang wherefore i chide thee not when i with marriage hymns lead forth the maid 
but custom joined with time shall deaden pain his name to whom thou hast betrothed my child i know his land his lineage would i learn agamemnon the nymph aegina was asopus child clytemnestra and did a mortal wed her or a god agamemnon zeus aeus he begat oenone's lord clytemnestra which son of aeus possessed his house agamemnon peleus and peleus wedded nereus's child clytemnestra by the god granted or in heaven's despite agamemnon twas zeus betrothed her and her father gave clytemnestra where did he wed her neath the heaving sea agamemnon where chiron dwells at pelion's sacred foot clytemnestra where tribes of centaurs have their haunt men say agamemnon yea there the gods held peleus marriage feast clytemnestra did thetis or his father rear achilles agamemnon chiron that he might learn not vile men's ways clytemnestra ay so wise was the teacher wiser yet the sire agamemnon such hero is to be thy daughter's lord clytemnestra none better in what greek town is his home agamemnon on phthia's marches by apidanus clytemnestra thither wilt thou lead hence thy child and mine agamemnon nay his part this who taketh her to wife clytemnestra blessings on them on what day shall they wed agamemnon when comes full orb the moon with blessing crown clytemnestra hast slain the goddess victim for our child agamemnon so purpose i even this we have in hand clytemnestra thereafter wilt thou hold the marriage feast agamemnon when to the gods i have offered offerings due clytemnestra and i where shall i make the women's feast agamemnon here by the argive galley's stately sterns clytemnestra here quoth ah yet it must be fair befall agamemnon know'st thy part lady then my bidding do clytemnestra what thing obedience is my want to thee agamemnon here where the bridegroom is will i myself clytemnestra what mother's office in mine absence do agamemnon with help of danaeans give thy child away clytemnestra but i where must i tarry all this while agamemnon to argos go for thy young daughter's care clytemnestra and leave my child and who shall raise the torch agamemnon i will provide such bridal torch as fits clytemnestra all custom outraged naught is that to thee agamemnon to mingle with armed hosts beseems not thee clytemnestra beseems that mother give away her child agamemnon nor that those maids at home be left alone clytemnestra they in safe maiden bowers be warded well agamemnon nay hear me clytemnestra no by the argives goddess queen go order things without within doors i will order what is fitting for a bride exit agamemnon ah me vain mine essay my hope is foiled who out of sight was fain to send my wife with subtle schemes against my best beloved i weave plots yet am baffled everywhere but none the less with calchas will i go the priest the goddess pleasure to inquire for me ill doom for hellas travail sore the wise man in his house should keep a wife helpful and good or never take a bride chorus unto simois unto the silver swirling eddies shall come the hellene host with galleys with battle gear onward hurling to the plain of phoebus the troyland coast where tosseth cassandra her tresses golden with their garlands of green-leaved bay enfolden as they tell when by mighty compulsion holden her soul is on storm-winds of prophecy tossed 
on the heights of their tower shall the trojans enringing the ramparts of troy in their harness stand when over the waters the war-god bringing the stately galleys with oars to the strand draweth near where the runnels of simois are sliding to hail her in priam's halls who is hiding sister of zeus's sons heaven abiding with buckler and spear unto hellas land and the war fiend shall girdle with slaughter pergamus towers of stone and the captive's head back bend that the throat shearing blade may descend when low in the dust he hath brought her troy from her height overthrown he shall make for her maids a lamenting and the queen of priam shall moan and the daughter of zeus shall know in that day and the flood shall flow of helen's tears of repenting who hath left her husband lone over me over mine may there loom no not in the third generation never such shadow of doom as shall haunt each gold-decked dame of the lydian the phrygian nation as beside the weaving frame they shall wail to each other in fear and despair ah who on the braids of my shining hair clenching his grip till my tears down shower me from my perishing country shall tear as one plucketh a flower for thy sake child of the swan arch neck if credence worthy the story be that laid a bear to a winged bird thee when zeus with its plumes had his changed form decked or whether in scrolls of minstrelsy such tales unto mortals hath fable brought told out of season and all for naught enter achilles achilles where is achaia's battle chief hereby what henchman will bear word that peleus son achilles at his gates is seeking him this tarrying here falls not alike on all for some there are of us who yet unwed have left their dwellings wardenless and here sit idle on the shore some that have wives and children such strange longing for this war hath upon hellas fallen by heaven's will mine own my righteous grievance must i speak let whoso will beside his own cause plead pharsalia's land and peleus have i left and through these light airs of Europus wait checking my myrmidons yet urgent aye they cry why dally achilles how long time yet must the troyward bound array wait on act if thou canst else lead thy war-host home waiting no more on atreus sons delays End part two recording by expatriate in bangor maine part three of iphigenia in aulis by euripides translated by arthur sanders way eighteen forty seven to nineteen thirty this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part three enter clytemnestra clytemnestra child of the nereid goddess from within thy voice i heard and come without the tent achilles great queen of shamefastness what lady here behold i crowned with peerless loveliness clytemnestra no marvel thou shouldst know me not unseen ere this thy shrinking modesty i praise achilles who art thou why camest thou to achaia's host a woman unto men with bucklers fenced clytemnestra i am leda's daughter clytemnestra named am i king agamemnon is my lord achilles well hast thou said in brief what most imports yet shame were this that i with women talk clytemnestra stay wherefore flee nay give me thy right hand to clasp the prelude to espousals blessed achilles how sayest mine hand in thine ashamed were i before thy lord of such unsanctioned touch clytemnestra tis wholly sanctioned since thou art to wed my child o son of the lady of the sea achilles what wedding this i know not what to say except of crazed wits this strange utterance come clytemnestra tis all men's nature so in shame to shrink before new kin and talk of spousal rites achilles lady thy daughter have i never wooed nor word of marriage atreus sons have said clytemnestra what shall this mean 
thou marvel at my words in turn for passing strange are thine to me achilles think we have common cause to search out this perchance nor thou nor i speak false herein clytemnestra how have i been abused seek i a bridal which is not as doth seem i am crushed with shame achilles some one perchance hath mocked both thee and me nay lightly hold it lay it not to heart clytemnestra farewell i cannot with unshrinking eyes meet thine who am made a liar outraged so achilles farewell i bid thee too i pass within yonder pavilion now to seek thy lord old servant from within the tent stranger aeacus scion tarry thou what ho to thee i call whom the goddess bare and laid his daughter unto thee withal achilles who through doors half open calleth calleth with what fearful breath old servant bond am i the name i scorn not neither fortune suffereth achilles whose not mine art thou no part in agamemnon's goods i have old servant hers who stands before the tent me tyndareus her father gave achilles lo i stay if aught thou wouldst speak that for which thou badest me wait old servant stand ye twain alone none other near hereby before the gate achilles speak alone we are from out the king's pavilion come thou nigher old servant entering from tent fortune and my foresight save ye them whose saving i desire achilles stately invocation this it may for needs to come avail clytemnestra as old servant is about to kneel to her linger not to touch mine hand if thou to me wouldst tell thy tale old servant loyal to thee and to thy children well thou knowest me i ween clytemnestra yea i know that from of old mine house's servant thou hast been old servant and that agamemnon gat me in possession with thy dower clytemnestra thou to argos camest with me hast been mine unto this hour old servant so it is to thee devoted more than to thy lord am i clytemnestra prithee now unveil thy secret whatsoe'er the mystery old servant lo thy child her very father with his own hands soon shall slay clytemnestra how avaunt the story ancient sure thy wit is all astray old servant severing thine unhappy daughter's snowy neck with murder's sword clytemnestra oh alas for me now haply murder frenzied is my lord old servant sane save touching thee and this thy daughter only mad herein clytemnestra what the reason what avenging demon drives him to the sin old servant oracles as calchas saith that the host may pass the sea clytemnestra whither woe for me for thee whose father waits to murder thee old servant unto dardanus halls that menelaus may bring helen home clytemnestra ha is helen's home returning fraught with iphigenia's doom old servant thou hast all the sire will sacrifice thy child to artemis clytemnestra and the marriage made the pretext drew me from my home to this old servant so that thou shouldst gladly bring thy child to be achilles bride clytemnestra daughter to destruction comest thou and thy mother at thy side old servant piteous lot is thine is hers an awful deed thy lord essayed clytemnestra woe is me undone the fountains of my eyes may not be stayed old servant if tis pain to be bereft of children let the tear flood flow clytemnestra nay but ancient whence hast heard it sayest thou how dost thou know old servant with a letter touching that aforetime written hasted i clytemnestra countermanding or re-urging me to bring my child to die old servant nay forbidding thee to bring for then thy lord was sound of wit clytemnestra why then bearing such a scroll to me didst not deliver it old servant 
menelaus snatched it from me cause of all these miseries clytemnestra child of thetis son of peleus hearest thou these infamies achilles yea i hear thy sorrow nor my part therein i tamely bear clytemnestra they will slay my daughter setting thine espousals for a snare achilles wroth am i against thy lord i count it not a little thing clytemnestra i will not think shame to bow me down unto thy knees to cling mortal unto child of goddess what is matron pride to me lo for whom above my daughter should i labour instantly ah be thou o goddess born protector unto my despair and unto the maiden name thy bride all vainly though it were all for thee i wreathed her leading her to be thy bride i came came to slaughter leading her on thee shall fall reproaches shame who did shield her not for though ye ne'er were linked in marriage ties yet the hapless maiden's husband wast thou called in any wise by thy beard i pray thy right hand by thy mother's deity since thy name was mine undoing see thy name untarnished be altar have i none to flee to save thy knee in my distress not a friend is near of agamemnon's cruel recklessness thou hast heard and i am come a woman as thou dost behold unto this array of sea-folk lawless and to evil bold yet so they be willing strong to help if thou but dare extend o'er mine head thine hand our life is saved if not our life hath end chorus mighty is motherhood of potent spell all mothers for a child's life will fight hard achilles my whole soul's chivalry is to action stirred yet hath my soul learnt temperance and grief for troubles and in joy for triumphs won for such men are by reason schooled to pass through life well in cool judgment self-reliant true pain sometimes rewards the overwise yet oft of self-reliance profit comes fostered by chiron one that feared god most was i and learned to tread no tortuous ways and atreus sons if righteously they lead will i obey else will i not obey here as in troy i'll keep me free man still and as i may will grace a hero's part thee lady outraged by thy nearest kin will i so far as such young champion can write so shall my compassion buckler thee ne'er by her father slain shall be thy child once called my bride i will not lend myself to be thy lord's tool in his subtle plots else my mere name though it have drawn no sword shall slay thy daughter and the cause thereof thy lord my very blood were murder tainted if this maid suffering wrongs intolerable for my sake and my marriage be destroyed with outrage past belief unmerited so were i basest among argive men a thing of naught and menelaus a man sprung of no peleus but some vengeance fiend if my name shall do butchery for thy lord no by the foster son of ocean's waves nereus the sire of thetis who bear me king agamemnon shall not touch thy child not on her robe to lay a finger-tip else hath barbaric sipolis were a city whence sprang the line of yonder war-chief's house and phythia's name were nowhere named of men his meal his labour drops of sacrifice calchas the seer shall rue what is a seer a man who speaks few truths but many lies when his shafts hit who is ruined if he miss it is not for the bride's sake brides untold are eager for mine hand that this i say but king agamemnon hath insulted me he ought to have asked my name's use first of me to trap his child chiefly through trust in me did clytemnestra yield her lord her daughter i had granted this to greece if only so the voyage to troy might be had not refused to aid their cause with whom i marched to war but now in yon chief's eyes i am as naught to honour me or shame me is all one soon shall my sword know ere it go to troy i will disdain it with death dews of blood if any man shall wrest from me thy daughter calm thee as some god strong to save i come though i be none yet will i prove me such chorus 
thou speakest son of peleus worthily of thee and of the sea-born goddess dread clytemnestra how can i praise thee and not overpraise and yet not mar the grace by stint thereof for good men praise do in a manner hate the praiser if he praiseth overmuch i blush to thrust on thee my piteous tale my pain is mine mine anguish rings not thee yet is it nobly done when from his height the good man stoops to help the stricken ones pity me for in piteous case am i who first had dreamed that thou shouldst wed my child vain hope was mine next haply unto thee ill omen for thy bridal yet to come should be my child's death take thou heed thereof well spakest thou the first things as the last for if thou will it shall my child be saved wouldst thou she clasp thy knees a suppliant no maiden's part this yet if thou think well she shall come lifting innocent frank eyes but if without her i may win my suit in maiden pride let her abide within yet modesty bows to hard necessity achilles nay bring not forth thy daughter in my sight nor lady risk we the reproach of fools for this thronged host of all home trammels free loves evil babble of malicious tongues in any wise the same end shall ye gain praying or prayerless for one mighty strife waits me from evil to deliver you one thing be sure thou hast heard i will not lie if lie i do or mock you may i die and only die not if i save the maid clytemnestra heaven bless thee who still succorest the distressed achilles now hear me that the matter well may speed clytemnestra what meanest thou i needs must list to thee achilles let us to a better mood persuade her sire clytemnestra he is something craven fears o'er much the host achilles yet mightier wrestler reason is than fear clytemnestra cold hope is this yet say what i must do achilles beseech him first to murder not his child if he withstand thee come thou unto me for if he heed thy prayer i need not stir since in this very yielding is her life and friendlier so to a friend shall i appear nor shall the army blame me if i bring this thing to pass by reason not by force if all go well upon thy friends and thee shall gladness dawn and that without mine aid clytemnestra ah wise words i must act as seems thee best but if we shall not gain mine heart's desire where shall i see thee whither shall i go in misery to find thy champion hand achilles where best befits will i keep watch for thee that none behold thee traversing wild-eyed the danaean host shame not thy father's house for tyndareus deserves not to be made a mock for great is he midst hellene men clytemnestra this shall be rule thou i must be thy thrall if there be gods thy righteousness shall earn their favour if not wherefore should men toil exeunt severally achilles and clytemnestra chorus oh what bridal chant rang with the crying of the libyan flute with the footfall of dancers replying to the voice of the lute with the thrill of the reeds glad greeting in the day when or Peleon fleeting unto peleus espousals with beating of golden shod foot the beautiful tress song maidens to the god's feast came and their bridal hymns ravishing cadence bore thetis's fame o'er the hills of the centaurs far pealing through the woodlands of Peleon soft stealing the new-born splendour revealing of the aeacid's name and dardanus's child whom the pinion of the eagle bore from phrygia ganymede minion of zeus did pour from the gold's depth nectar while dancing feet of the sea-maids were glancing through circles through mazes entrancing the white sands o'er leaf crown came the centaur riders with their lances of pine to the feast of the heaven abiders and the bowls of their wine hail sea queen so rang their acclaiming a light over thessaly flaming sang chiron the unborn naming achilles shall shine and as phoebus made clear the vision he shall pass sang the seer unto priam's proud land on a mission of fire with the spear and the shield of the myrmidons clashing in gold 
for the fire king's crashing forges shall clothe him with flashing warrior gear of his mother the gift shall be given of thetis brought down so did the dwellers in heaven with happiness crown the espousals of nereus's daughter when a bride unto peleus they brought her of the steed of the lords of the water chief in renown but men shall wreath thine head for death thy golden hair as heifer white and red down from the hill caves led a victim pure shall stain with blood thy throat's snow fair though never thou wert bred wherewith the herdmen strain their reed pipes thrill the air but at thy mother's side was nursed was decked a bride for a king's heir what might hath now modesty's maiden face or virtue's brow when godlessness bears sway and mortals thrust away virtue and cry give place when lawlessness hath law down trod and none will to his brother say let us beware the jealousy of god enter clytemnestra clytemnestra forth of the tent to seek my lord i come who is from his pavilion absent long and drowned in tears mine hapless daughter is with wails now ringing high now moaning low since she hath heard what death her father plots lo of one even now drawn nigh i spake yon agamemnon who shall straightway stand convict of sin against his very child enter agamemnon agamemnon o laid as child well met without the tent i would speak with thee ere our daughter come of that which fits not brides to be should hear clytemnestra and what is this that fits the time so well agamemnon send forth the tent the maid to join her sire for here the lustral waters stand prepared and meal for hands to cast on cleansing flame and victims that ere bridles must be slain to artemis with spurtings of dark blood clytemnestra fair sound the things thou namest but to thy deeds i know not how to give fair sounding names daughter come forth to the uttermost thou know'st thy sire's design the babe orestes take and bring thy brother folded in thy robes enter iphigenia lo she is here obedient unto thee the rest for her for me myself will speak agamemnon child wherefore weep and blithely look no more but earthward bend thy vesture shrouded eyes clytemnestra ah me how shall i make beginning of my woes for well may i account each one the first midmost or last in misery's tangled web agamemnon how now how find i each and all conspired to show me looks of trouble and amaze clytemnestra answer my question husband like a man agamemnon no need to bid me i would fain be asked clytemnestra thy child and mine meanst thou to murder her agamemnon ha a hideous question foul suspicion this clytemnestra peace render me answer first as touching this agamemnon to question fair fair answer shalt thou hear clytemnestra naught else i ask thou answer me naught else agamemnon o oh, mighty doom o oh, fate o oh, fortune mine clytemnestra and mine and hers one fate for wretched three agamemnon whom have i wronged clytemnestra thou and of me ask this this wit of thine is utter witlessness agamemnon aside undone am i my secret is betrayed clytemnestra i know all yea thy purposed crime have learnt thy very silence and thy groan on groan are thy confession labour not with speech agamemnon lo i am silent wherefore utter lies and add unto misfortune shamelessness clytemnestra give ear now for i will unfold my pleas nor use half hinting riddles any more first that with this i may reproach thee first by force not of my will didst thou wed me thou slewest tantalus my sometime lord didst dash my living babe against the stones even from my breast with violence tearing him then did the sons of zeus my brethren twain flashing on white steeds come to war with thee but mine old father tyndareus begged thy life who camest his suppliant and thou keptest me 
so reconciled to thee and to thine house a blameless wife was i be witness thou chaste in desires increasing in thine halls thy substance still so that thine enterings in were joy and thine outgoings happiness rare spoil is this for man to win such spouse of getting worthless wives there is no lack this son with daughters three to thee i bear and of one wilt thou rob me ruthlessly now if one ask thee wherefore thou wilt slay her speak what wilt say or must i speak for thee that helen's lord may win her glorious this to pay a wanton's price in children's lives so shall we buy things loathed with things most loved come if thou go to war and leave me here at home and through long absence tarry there with what heart think'st thou shall i keep thine halls when vacant of her i behold each chair vacant each maiden bower and sit me down in loneliness of tears and mourn her ever o child he which begat thee murdered thee himself none other by none other hand leaving unto this house such vengeance debt seeing there needeth but faint pretext now whereon both i and thy seed left to thee shall greet thee with such greeting as befits nay by the gods constrain not me to turn traitress to thee nor such be thou to me lo now thy daughter slain what prayer wilt thou pray then implore what blessing murderer of thy child an ill home-coming since in shame thou goest wert just that i pray any good for thee o oh, surely must we deem the gods be fools if we wish blessings upon murderers wilt thou return to argos clasp thy babes o oh, impious thought what child shall meet thy look if thou hast given up one of them to death hast ta'en account of this or is it thine only to flaunt a sceptre lead a host this righteous proffer shouldst thou have made will ye achaeans sail to phrygia land e'en then cast lots whose daughter needs must die this had been fair not that thou choose thine own the danaean's victim rather than that he whose quarrel this is menelaus slay hermione for her mother now must i the loyal wife be of my child bereft while she the harlot brings her daughter home to dwell in sparta and prosperity herein if i plead ill thou answer me but if my words ring true repent slay not thy child in mine and so shalt thou be wise chorus heed her for good it is thou join to save thy child agamemnon none shall gainsay this iphigenia had i the tongue of orpheus o my sire to charm with song the rocks to follow me and which with eloquence whomsoe'er i would i had essayed it now mine only cunning tears will i bring for this is all i can and suppliant will i twine about thy knees my body which this mother bare to thee ah slay me not untimely sweet is light constrain me not to see the nether gloom twas i first called thee father thou me child twas i first thrown my body on thy knees and gave thee sweet caresses and received and this thy word was ah my little maid blessed shall i see thee in a husband's halls living and blooming worthily of me and as i twine my fingers in thy beard whereto i now cling thus i answered thee and what of thee shall i greet thy grey hairs father with loving welcome in mine halls repaying all thy fostering toil for me i keep remembrance of that converse yet thou hast forgotten thou wouldst murder me ah no by pelops by thy father atreus and by this mother whose first travail pangs now in this second anguish are renewed what part have i in paris rape of helen why father should he from my ruin have come look on me give me one glance oh one kiss that i may keep in death from thee but this memorial if thou heed my pleading not brother small help canst thou be to thy friends yet weep with me yet supplicate thy sire to slay thy sister not some sense of ill even in wordless infants is inborn lo by his silence he implores thee father have mercy have compassion on my youth yea by thy beard we pray thee 
loved ones twain a nestling one and one a daughter grown in one cry summing all i must prevail sweet passing sweet is light for men to see death is but nothingness who prays to die is mad ill life o'erpasseth glorious death chorus o oh, thou wretch helen through thee and thy sin comes agony on the atreids and their seed end of part three recording by expatriate in bangor maine part four of iphigenia in aulis by euripides translated by arthur sanders way eighteen forty seven to nineteen thirty this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part four agamemnon i know what asketh pity what doth not who love mine own babes i were madman else awful it is my wife to dare this deed yet awful to forbear i must do this mark ye yon countless host with galleys fenced and all the brazen harness hellene kings who cannot voyage unto ilium's towers who cannot raise troy's citadel renowned but by thy blood as calchas saith the seer a fiery passion maddeneth hella's host to sail in all haste to the alien's land and put an end to rapes of hellene wives my daughters will they slay in argos you and me if i annul the goddess hest not menelaus hath enslaved me child nor yet to serve his pleasure have i come tis hellas for whom will i will i not i must slay thee this cannot we withstand free must she be so far as in thee lies and me child nor by aliens violence must sons of hellas of their wives be spoiled exit clytemnestra o child o stranger damsel see woe for thy death alas for me thy father flees to hades yielding thee iphigenia alas for me mother one song for us twain fate finds us none other but this sad strain upon me shall the light and the beams of the sun shine never again o phrygian glade overgloomed by the crest of ida where laid in a snow heapen nest was the suckling by priam cast forth which he tore from the mother's breast yea left him to die till the death doom should claim paris whereby throughout troy was his name paris of ida where fostered a herdman mid kine he became would god amid fountains of foam silvered sheen of the nymphs of the mountains his home had not been nor where roses and bluebells for goddesses bloomed amid water meads green came the queen of beguiling with love litten eye passion kindling and smiling as for victory nigh came pallas in pride of her prowess and hera the queen of the sky and hermes was there the herald of heaven so the strife of most fair loath contest was striven whereof to me death but to danaeans glory o damsels was given me the huntress receiveth for her first fruits of prey and mine own sire leaveth his child doth betray a daughter most wretched o mother my mother and fleeth away woe's me to have seen her helen whose name is a bitterness keener than words may frame she has made to me slaughter in doom and a father's deed of shame oh had aulus received not bronze prows long embayed oh had troy been reprieved not while their pine wings delayed oh had zeus never breathed on euripus the breath that our voyaging stayed he who tempers his gales unto men as he will some shake out glad sails some in sorrow sit still fate fettered these speed from the haven the white wings of those never fill o travail-worn seed of the sons of a day how fate hath decreed disaster alway what burden of anguish did tendarius's child on the danaeans lay chorus i pity thee for this unhappy lot found of thee would thou ne'er hadst come thereon iphigenia 
mother mine i see a throng of men that hither hasten on clytemnestra child tis he for whom thou camest hither even thetis's son iphigenia handmaids ope to me the doors that i within may hide my face clytemnestra wherefore flee my child iphigenia for shame i cannot meet achilles gaze clytemnestra wherefore so iphigenia with shame the misery of my bridal crusheth me clytemnestra not in plight for dainty shrinking art thou when tis thus with thee tarry then no time is this for maiden pride if we but may enter achilles achilles hapless woman child of leda clytemnestra truly hapless name this day achilles fearfully the argives clamour clytemnestra what their clamour tell the thing achilles touching this thy daughter clytemnestra ah thy words with evil presage ring achilles slain she must be cry they clytemnestra is there none whose words with theirs contend achilles yea myself in tumult's peril was clytemnestra what peril stranger friend achilles even to be stoned with stones clytemnestra since thou hadst fain my daughter spared achilles even so clytemnestra but lay a hand on thee and who such deed had dared achilles all the hellenes clytemnestra but with thee was not thy people's battle host achilles first were these to turn against me clytemnestra o oh, my daughter we are lost achilles taunted me as thrall to marriage clytemnestra and what answer didst thou frame achilles slay my destined bride i said ye shall not clytemnestra yea a righteous claim achilles whom her father promised clytemnestra yea to argos sent withal to bring achilles yet was i outclamoured clytemnestra ah the rabble is a baneful thing achilles yet will i defend thee clytemnestra singly fight against a multitude achilles seest thou these who bear mine armour clytemnestra blessings on thy dauntless mood achilles yea i shall be blessed clytemnestra she shall not now be on the altar laid achilles not while i am living clytemnestra how will any come to seize the maid achilles thousands and odysseus leading clytemnestra he the seed of sisyphus achilles even he clytemnestra self-bidden or did all the host appoint it thus achilles chosen and consenting clytemnestra evil choice for murderous violence achilles nay but i will stay him clytemnestra would he hail her unconsenting hence achilles yea and by her golden tresses clytemnestra what must then be done of me achilles cling unto thy child clytemnestra if this may save her slain she shall not be achilles ay and surely unto this it will come iphigenia mother to my word hearken ye against thine husband i behold the anger stirred causelessly twere hard for us inevitable doom to brave meet it is we thank the stranger hero for his will to save yet that he be not reproached of hellas host must we beware so should ruin seize him and ourselves in no wise better fare hear the thing that flashed upon me mother as i thought hereon lo resolved i am to die and fain am i that this be done gloriously that i thrust ignoble craven thoughts away prithee mother this consider with me mark how well i say unto me almighty hellas looks i only can bestow boons upon her sailing of her galleys phrygia's overthrow 
safety for her daughters from barbarians in the days to come that the ravisher no more may snatch them from a happy home when the penalty is paid for paris outrage helen's shame all this great deliverance i in death shall compass and my name as of one who gave to hellas freedom shall be blessing crowned must i live that clutching life with desperate hand i should be found for the good of hellenes didst thou bear me not for thine alone lo how countless warriors with the shield before the bosom thrown myriads now the fatherland is wronged with strenuous oar in hand all will fear not to encounter foes to die for hellas land and shall all be thwarted baffled by the life of one of me where were justice here and what can i set forth for answering plea turn we now to this thing also never ought this man to make war on all the argives no nor perish for a woman's sake worthier than ten thousand women one man is to look on light lo if artemis hath willed to claim my body as her right what shall i a helpless mortal woman thwart the will divine nay it cannot be my body unto hellas i resign sacrifice me raise ye troy for this through all the ages is my memorial children marriage glory all are mine in this right it is that hellenes rule barbarians not that alien yoke rest on hellenes mother they be bondmen we be freeborn folk chorus noble the part thou playest maiden is but fate and artemis ill part is theirs achilles agamemnon's child a god came near to bless me could i but have won thee for my bride happy in thee is hellas thou in hellas well saidst thou this and worthily of our land thou hast turned away from strife with gods a thing too hard for thee hast weighed the good fate spares yet love for thee now thrills me through the more that i have seen thy nature noble heart wherefore look to it thee i fain would serve and bear thee home i chafe be thetis witness that i should save thee not in battle shock with danaeans think a fearful thing is death iphigenia i say this as one past all hope and fear suffice that through her beauty tyndareus's child stirs strife and slaughter thou o stranger prince die not for me nor slay thou any man let me be hellas saviour if i may achilles o soul heroic naught can i say more here too since fixed thine heart is thy resolve is noble why should one say not the truth but yet for haply yet thy mood may change that thou mayst know the proffer that i make i go to place my weapons nigh the altar ready to suffer not but bar thy death thou mayst even thou unto mine offer turn when thou beholdest at thy throat the knife thou shalt not through a hasty impulse die no with these arms will i unto the shrine and for thy coming thither will i wait exit iphigenia mother why art thou weeping silently clytemnestra good cause have i woes me to break mine heart iphigenia forbear make me not craven but this do clytemnestra speak thou shalt have no wrong of me my child iphigenia shear not for me the tresses of thine hair neither in sable stole array thy form clytemnestra why sayst thou this when i have lost thee child iphigenia nay i am saved thy glory shall i be clytemnestra how sayest thou must i not mourn thy death iphigenia nay nay no grave mound shall be heaped for me clytemnestra how then in death is burial not implied iphigenia zeus's daughter's altar is my sepulchre clytemnestra child i will do thy bidding thou sayst well iphigenia as one blessed benefactor of our greece clytemnestra what message to thy sister shall i bear iphigenia them too array thou not in sable stole clytemnestra shall i bear them some word of love from thee iphigenia only farewell 
to manhood rear this babe clytemnestra embrace him for the last time look on him iphigenia to orestes dearest thou gavest us all the help thou couldst clytemnestra can i do aught at home to pleasure thee iphigenia my father and thine husband hate not thou clytemnestra a fearful course for thy sake must he run iphigenia sore loath for hellas sake hath he destroyed me clytemnestra by guile unkingly unworthy atreus son iphigenia who will lead me ere men drag me by mine hair clytemnestra i will go with thee iphigenia nay thou sayst not well clytemnestra grasping thy vesture iphigenia heed me mother mine tarry for thee for me tis better so let one of my sire's henchmen lead me on to artemis meadow where i shall be slain clytemnestra child art thou gone iphigenia i shall return no more clytemnestra leaving thy mother iphigenia as thou seest tis hard clytemnestra hold o oh, forsake me not iphigenia nay shed no tear clytemnestra enters the tent ye damsels raise all hails of happy speed the paean for my lot to zeus's child artemis bid the host keep reverent hush bring mons of sacrifice let blaze the flame with purifying meal and let my sire compass the altar rightward lo i come to give to hellas safety victory crowned raises the processional chant lead me for ilium's phrygia's overthrowing give to me garlands bring festooning flowers lo my locks wait the blossoms overstrowing the lustral laver showers to artemis the queen blessed goddess treading a measure fane and altar compass ye i wash the curse out with the hallowed shedding of blood if this must be mother for thee my fount of pity streameth now for i may not at the altar weep sing maidens artemis whose temple gleameth toward calchas o'er the deep from where in aulis straitened havens shaken in fury spears are at my name uptossed hail motherland pelasgia hail forsaken mycenae home home lost chorus dost thou on the city of perseus cry by the toil of the cyclopes builded high iphigenia for a light unto hellas thou fosterest me and i die o oh, freely i die for thee chorus yea for thy glory shall never die iphigenia hail light divine hail day in whose hands doth the world's torch shine in a strange new life must i dwell and a strange new lot must be mine farewell dear light farewell chorus see who for ilium's phrygia's overthrowing with her fair hair for death be starred with flowers is to the sacrificial altar going besprent with labour showers yea to the altar of the murder lover to sprinkle it with thine outrushing life whose crimson all thy shapely neck shall cover gashed by the fearful knife for thee the lustral dews of thy sire's pouring wait the achaean thousands troyward strain chant we zeus's child the huntress queen adoring for o oh, thy loss is gain joyer in human blood to phrygia's far land speed thou the host to troy the treason shore so crown the king crown hellas with a garland of glory evermore enter messenger messenger daughter of tyndareus clytemnestra come forth from the tent that thou mayst hear my tale enter clytemnestra clytemnestra i heard thy voice and hitherward i come wretched with horror all distraught with fear lest thou have brought to crown the present woe some fresh one messenger nay but fain am i to tell touching thy child a strange and awesome thing clytemnestra linger not then but tell it with all speed messenger yea all dear mistress clearly shalt thou learn from the beginning told except my tongue through my mind's turmoil falter in the tale 
when to the grove we came of artemis zeus's child and to her meadows flower be starred the place of muster for achaia's host leading thy child straightway the argive throng gathered but when king agamemnon saw the maid for slaughter entering the grove he heaved a groan he turned his head away weeping and drew his robe before his eyes but to her father's side she came and stood and said my father at thine hest i come and for my country's sake my body give and for all hellas to be led of you unto the goddess altar willingly and sacrificed if this is heaven's decree prosper so far as rests with me and win victory and return to fatherland then let no argive lay a hand on me silent unflinching will i yield my neck so spake she and all marvelled when they heard the maiden's courage and her heroism forth stood talthybius then whose part it was proclaiming silence and a reverent hush and the seer calchas in a golden maund laid down a keen knife which his hand had drawn out of its sheath then crowned the maiden's head then peleus son took maund and lustral bowl and round the altar of the goddess ran and cried zeus daughter slayer of wild beasts whose wheels of light roll splendours through the gloom accept this offering which we render thee achaia's host with agamemnon king the unsullied blood from a fair maiden's neck and grant the galleys voyaging unvexed and grant our spears may spoil the towers of troy with bowed heads atreus sons and all the host stood the priest took the knife he spake the prayer he scanned her throat for fittest place to strike then through my soul exceeding anguish thrilled mine head drooped lo a sudden miracle for each man plainly heard the blow strike home but the maid none knew whither she had vanished loud cried the priest all echoed back the cry seeing a portent by some god sent down unlooked for past belief albeit seen for gasping on the ground there lay a hind most huge to see and passing fair to view with whose blood all the goddess altar ran then calchas cried how gladly ye may guess o chieftains of this leagued achaean host see ye this victim by the goddess laid before her altar even a mountain hind this holds she more acceptable than the maid that she stain not with noble blood her altar gladly she hath accepted this and grants to us fair voyage and onset upon troy be of good cheer then every mariner hence to the galleys where this day must we fleet out of aulis hollow bays and cross the aegean surge so when the victim all was burnt to ashes in the fire god's flame meet prayer he offered for the host's return me agamemnon sped to tell thee this and say what heaven-sent fortune fair he hath what deathless time through hellas he hath won lo i was there and speak as one who saw doubtless thy child was wafted to the gods forbear grief cease from wrath against thy lord of mortals unforeseen the gods ways are and whom they love they save for this same day dying and living hath beheld thy child chorus how glad i hear the messenger's report he saith thy child bides living midst the gods clytemnestra o daughter of what god stolen art thou how shall i bid farewell to thee how know this for aught but a sweet lie spoken to heal the heart that for thee is broken chorus lo their king agamemnon draweth nigh bearing the self-same tale to tell to thee enter agamemnon agamemnon wife for our child's fate happy may we be for she in truth hath fellowship with gods now must thou take this weanling little one and journey home for seaward looks the host farewell it shall be long ere thee i greet from troy returning be it well with thee chorus pass atria's scion to phrygia's land with joy and with joy from the battle toil come bearing the glorious spoil of troy exeunt omnes end part four recording by expatriate in bangor maine end of iphigenia in aulis by euripides translated by arthur sanders way 
1847 to 1930.